Joints are an important part of any physics engine. They're how we connect bodies to one another. Unfortunately, in Godot, they're a little bit unintuitive. So today we're gonna to go through some practical examples so that you can spend less time reading documentation and more time making cool stuff like this. Let's get started. In the interest of not leaving anyone out, I very briefly wanna cover static versus rigid body 2Ds. If you're already super familiar with them, I'll leave a timestamp below so that you can skip ahead, but this is gonna be quick. For the purposes of these examples, you can think of static bodies as objects that don't move. They're not affected by gravity. If something whams into it, it's not gonna move no matter how heavy or how hard it gets hit. Rigid bodies, on the other hand, do move. They are affected by gravity and they will react to other forces. Taking a look at how they're constructed, both have a root node of either a static or rigid body 2D. They have a sprite, which has nothing to do with how they behave. It's just a visual. And then a collision shape that defines the collision. Each of the rigid and static body 2Ds in these examples have collision layer and collision mask flags set. These define which objects within the simulation collide with one another. So for example, you might have balls that collide with the floor and one another, but not the player. If you want more information, I'm gonna leave a link to a video I did exactly on this topic down in the description. With that background behind us, let's take a look at the pin joint, which I think is the simplest of all the joints. This very basic scene has a couple of static bodies to collide with or hang from, as you'll see in a second, and this one rigid body, which will fall when we test the game. It collides with the static body and bounces off into oblivion. If we instead wanted to affix it to something, like this static body triangle up here, we can bring in a pin joint, which is gonna show up in the upper left. Let me drag that over here and then zoom in so you can see it better. You'll see they show up as just a plus. If we select the joint, you'll see it's asking which two nodes do we want to pin together. You can think of a pin joint like a thumbtack. So we can do that two ways. The first is to click this assign button and then select the object we want to assign to that node, in this case, the static triangle. The other way is to drag the object onto the assign button. And now if I test this, you'll see it's actually just going to dangle in place because it's connected by that joint to a static body, which is not affected by gravity. Now, you might assume that this pin joint, like a real thumbtack, actually has to overlap the collision shape, and that's actually not the case. It's just anchoring it to the object, the nodes rather, that have been connected. So let's zoom out a little bit and mess with the one property that you're gonna use the most on the pin joint, and that's this softness, which essentially, defines how much play that joint has from where it was pinned. So by default, it's set to zero, which means it's completely rigid. If I pull this up a little bit and test it again, you'll see it's gonna kind of sag a little bit, more like a spring, but not actually a spring. That's a different joint that we'll get to. And you'll notice gravity is acting upon that. So if we actually move this joint up, let's put, actually, let's put it on the point here, and then let's move our alien over here. And then just for fun, let's turn on this stack of blocks that I prepared off camera. And when I hit play, it's going to swing around that pivot point and smash into the blocks, giving us a sort of wrecking ball effect. So before we move on, let's look at two practical examples of the pin joints. I've got this very basic car. It's literally just a rectangle. It's three rigid bodies connected by two pin joints. When I start the game, it lands quite rigidly. If I open up the car and select the two pin joints and give this a softness of 10, you'll see it's gonna behave more like a suspension. There's some bounce to it. The other thing I added is this rope bridge. You can put the car up there. And you'll see this is a, it's two static bodies with a bunch of rigid bodies strung together in between, all connected with pin joints. So if I start the game, you get this sort of rope bridge effect, which you can drive across and you can even jump, believe it or not. I'm not gonna go over the car script. It's in the example project. You can play around with it if you wanna download it. But I thought this 
rope bridge was a good example of how pin joints and softness might be used to make something like that in a game. Moving on to the groove joint. If a pin joint is more like a thumbtack, a groove joint is more like a fader bar. Let's again add our joint to the scene and we're gonna add a groove joint again added in the upper right. Um, a nice trick if you get tired of repositioning these is you can right click anywhere in the scene and then move the selected nodes to that location. You can also skip that step entirely and just right click and add the node at the place of the click. If you like tips like that, I will link another video down below. It's called 10 Godot Features Hidden in Plain Sight. It's full of little nuggets like this. So I'm gonna move this node here and then we're gonna rotate it. And the way these work is they define a continuum along which a rigid body will slide. You'll see we've got different properties now. Instead of softness, we've got a length and this offset. So if I bring the length up, and if I zoom in, you can see it's it looks kind of like a timeline. And then there's this sort of light pink little playhead here, which acts, it's called the initial offset, but it's basically where your rigid body starts along that continuum. Let's add an alien, a rigid body. And if we position our alien at that start point, and like we did with all the other joints, let's select it. And we're going to connect to the ground so that it stays put. And then we're gonna connect our alien to the other node and then I'm gonna hit play and you'll see it's gonna slide down there and slam into the other physics objects that it's supposed to interact with. If we wanted it to start at a different position, we could set this to say 200 and then reposition our alien accordingly and play. Now you will notice, well, you won't notice until I turn on debug collision shapes, but you'll notice that this doesn't actually update in real time. And a better example of that would be the other practical example I have here. Let me delete these and turn on what I call Mr. Happy Wrecking Ball. So we're building on what we learned with the pin joints. I've got a series of rigid objects that are connected together with pin joints, just like we did with the rope bridge, but instead it's sort of this dangling claw game wrecking ball kind of thing. And so the top rigid body, which I'm calling the anchor, is the one that is connected to this horizontal groove joint. And on that, I've placed a script that allows us to apply a force to move it rather than letting it slide down like we did in the gravity example on an angle. This one is horizontal and it will move based on forces that we apply to it. Now, if I play it and press right, you'll see it, the anchor moves along that groove joint and everything comes with it because they're connected through the pin joints and all of their masses and their momentums are affecting that simulation. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can see all the pin joints remain in their starting position as does that playhead on the groove joint. This is normal, it's unintuitive, but now you know it and don't worry about it when you see it. Now, if you're looking to learn more about physics simulations or game development in general, or honestly, anything creative, you should check out this video's sponsor, Skillshare. One of my favorite productivity experts, Ali Abdal, has several amazing classes on getting the most out of your time and effort. I honestly can't recommend these enough. Skillshare's classes are designed by creatives for creatives, and they've got thousands of classes ranging from storytelling to game development, marketing, illustration, and more. And if you're not sure which classes to start with, they've got curated sequential class collections called Learning Paths that help you master a specific skill. On Skillshare, you'll learn by doing, alongside a community who can give you feedback if you want, and you'll learn at your own pace, on your own schedule. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. So get started today. Now that brings us to our third and final joint, the dampened spring joint, which I think is the most unintuitive of the three. It does behave like a spring as you're imagining, but there's some strangeness about the UI. So let's add one to our scene and learning from past mistakes. Let's right click and say add node here and add our spring joint. I will zoom in. Again, we're getting that sort of continuum looking thing without the playhead this time. And I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, negative 90 to be exact. And then we're gonna increase the length to line it up with the center of mass so that these two are now connected 
by this spring in the middle. Of course, as we've done prior, we're going to need to drag both of those into our nodes A and B. And if I run this simulation, you'll see nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, if you look at the length and the rest length, the length is exactly what you think. It's the starting distance of the spring. The rest length is the length that the spring wants to return to. Whether it's able to has to do with the mass of the objects it's connected to, but the rest length when it's set to zero is treated as identical to the length. So what we have here is a spring of 190 length that wants to return to 190. So very little, if anything, is happening. If I set this to about, let's say, half around 90 and play this, you'll see now they're actually going to pull together. Now they don't collide, and that's because by default, all joints have disable collision turned on. It's probably because in a lot of cases, especially with pin joints, you have overlapping geometry. And like the car, you don't want the wheels colliding with other things that might be attached to the joint. In this case, we actually do want these to collide because they're like two dominoes toppling into each other. So I'm going to uncheck that. The next thing we're going to do is look at the other two properties that you're most likely to fiddle with. The stiffness is pretty much what you're imagining. It's kind of the strength of the string, how heavy a string it is. So it defaults to 20. If I crank it all the way up to 64, you'll see these two are gonna womp together a little faster than they did, which is pretty much what we expect. Damping is a little bit harder to describe. It's a lot easier to experiment with, and I, I encourage you to do so. I like to think of damping as kind of the inverse. So if stiffness is the strength of the spring, the damping is how hard it works to bring the objects back onto that spring when they're pushed away from it or away from each other. So if I turn damping way down, and this is kind of why I think of them as inverse, you'll see if I play this, they're gonna really womp together. In all honesty, you will probably play with stiffness far more than you'll play with damping, but just sort of experiment with how they relate to one another, and that will likely be good enough. Now, I showed you the spring in this format because I think it helps illustrate the way the spring functions, especially relative to where it's connected. In fact, if I drag this down here to the bottom, if I play this, you'll see they're not going to move in the same fashion. But this isn't always how you're going to see springs used. So usually they're more of like a dangly kind of rope thing. So let's get rid of this spring. Let's pull one of these guys down here. We're going to right click here and add a dampened spring joint. We will increase the length so that it connects to this object. And then of course, we're going to assign like we've been doing. Let's connect the top part of the spring to that static platform and the bottom of the spring to this object and play it. Let's just see what happens. So it's gonna sag a little bit and come to rest, and you'll see it's dropping below the length of the spring. You can adjust that a couple of ways. So one, of course, you can play with the stiffness. If we turn this way up and run it again, it's not gonna sag nearly as far. But also, things like gravity, other objects, and also this object's mass have a role in deciding how much it exerts on that spring. So if I were to turn the mass up to 10 and run this again, you'll see it behaves very different. Now that you understand how joints work, you can get to making freakish things like Steve here, who's about to leave all of his pin joints behind and waddle off this platform. This is made with pin joints and a motor, which we didn't get to, but we can in future videos if you'd like. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in one of these videos soon. Oh, Steve. Rough day, bud. Rough day.